Now, one of the most important things to remember concerning the feasts of the Lord in Leviticus 23 is to who they belong to. It goes to say in Leviticus 23, 2, speaks, uh, speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim, are to be holy convocations. Even these are my appointed feasts. All too often in Christianity, we say, oh, those are the feasts of the Jews. Discard them, throw them out, trash them, put them into the trash bin of history. That's all old. Nowhere does it say the feast of the Jews. These are the feasts of the Lord. He says, these are my feasts. Think about that. God is the one who's the boss who sets the appointments in the, in the daytimer. Now, he's invited the Jews to come and participate. That doesn't make it the feast of the Jews or the appointments of the Jews. It was the appointment of God. And if they don't want to come, that's their problem. But I sure miss it. If, if you belong to the Lord, then the feast belong to you. So it's very important to realize that they're his feasts. Even in Exodus chapter 12, verse 11, concerning the Passover, it says, And thus shall you eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand, eat it in haste. It is the, it is the Lord's Passover. It doesn't say it's the Jewish Passover. It says it's the Lord's Passover. It belongs to him. It's all too often from an anti-Semitic viewpoint that we relegate all the feasts of the Lord to the trash bin of history. But what does Colossians say? These things are shadows of things to come, which means that haven't arrived yet. Which brings me to the next point. The feasts were also called in Leviticus 23, holy, which means what? Set apart, convocations. Now, what does convocation mean? It means an assembly. But what's fascinating, the Hebrew word here is mikra, and it implies a dress rehearsal. Okay, so for every year, God told them around 1500 B.C., they were to slay the Passover lamb on Passover at 3 in the afternoon. So every year, the Jews are killing the Passover lamb on Passover at 3 in the afternoon. And when do you think Jesus died? On Passover at 3 in the afternoon. He didn't die in July. He didn't die in December. So every year, they were doing the dress rehearsal of what was to come. Okay, well, that's what the fall feasts are. They're the dress rehearsal of what's coming at his second coming. I mean, I can't help but think about this. Yom Teruah, the Feast of Trumpets, when we come together, we blow the shofar 100 times. Okay, that's traditionally what is done. The last blast is known as the last trump. When Paul referred to the, at the last trump, we shall all be changed, he's talking about the Feast of Trumpets. And so every year on the Feast of Trumpets, we are worshiping the king, honoring the king, we're blowing the shofars, but we have to realize, just like the tabernacle on earth was patterned after the one in heaven, they are also practicing his coming in heaven. The angels are there blowing shofars and practicing. Can you imagine? If something's important, you're going to rehearse it, right? Just like out at a wedding. Well, can you imagine in the heavens, do you think they're not practicing the second coming of the Messiah when everyone is worshiping him and praising him? Man, they are practicing. This is the king of kings who created the universe. Talk about honor. Just like if, if, if some governor or king or president was coming and we were going to honor him, we'd want to make sure everyone knew where they were going to stand, what they were going to do, and rehearse everything so it's ready. Well, that's what they're doing in heaven. And so on that day, while they're doing it in heaven, we're supposed to be practicing it on earth. And again, think about what it's going to be like one of these days on the Feast of Trumpets. We're there honoring and praising the king and blowing the shofar. And the next thing we know, we're going to be in the presence and we're going to... In Revelations, God said that Messiah was slain from the foundation of the world. When it says he was slain from the foundation of the world... What this is saying is the father knew the year, the month, the day, the exact hour that Yeshua would die. Do you think Yeshua died and the father went, oh, good grief, we got to go to plan B? That's not what happened. He had it all planned out from the very beginning. He knew what day Yeshua was going to die, what time he was going to die. Do you know the father even picked what songs were going to be sung at his funeral? I can tell you the songs that were sung. Okay, God is very detailed. 
But here's the important thing, and I think this is so important. We just got done reading in Genesis 1.14, God created the sun and the moon for signs and what? Seasons, okay? Signs and seasons, and signs mean signals. The word seasons mean for his divine appointments, right? With that understanding, look at 1 Thessalonians 5, chapter 1. What is Paul saying? Concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you don't have any need I should write to you. Why does he say that to them? They know the times and the seasons. They understand that it means a divine appointment, not seasons. So now listen to 1 Thessalonians 5, 2 through 4. You have to realize who he's speaking to. <clears throat> he's speaking to people who know the festivals of the Lord, the divine appointments. And look what the rest of it says. You yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. How many of you have heard that before? Everyone says, oh, right there it says the Lord comes as a thief in the night. We're all supposed to be stupid. That's not what it says. Look at this. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. Now listen to this next line. But you, brethren, are not in darkness that that day will overtake you as a thief. Why will that day not overtake you as a thief? Because you understand the times and the seasons. I don't have time to go into it, but everywhere that he says that he comes as a thief in the night or you won't know the day and the hour, you have to look at who he's talking to. He's talking to the lukewarm church of Laodicea in Revelation. He's talking to the foolish virgins. He's talking to the evil servants. When he says you won't know the day and the hour, look at who he's talking to. But <clears throat> the problem is we've been on the wrong calendar. 